In this video, I want to go over how we can actually pose our character using the generated rig. Until now, that was a serious shortcoming of this course. Basically, I showed you how to create a rig and not how to use it. I'm going to use this character that we rigged together and I'm also going to provide this file. Okay, so first I'm going to give you a basic overview of what the rig controls do. In the later part of this video, we are going to try to actually pose the character. Okay, so I'm going to select my rig and go to pose mode and you will be presented with this jumble of uh, shapes. And if you're confused, that's understandable. So one thing that we can do to clean up this uh, rig a little bit is to hide all of the tweak layers. So make sure the end panel is expanded and you're in the item tab and then simply click on each layer that says tweak on it. And that will disable all of our uh, tweak layers or tweak controls and that will uh, give us a cleaner rig to work with. So I'm going to try to explain each of these controls one by one and I think I'm going to start from the arm and then uh, legs. A lot of people are confused by the controls there so let's start there. In the arm you, you'll see that there is a set of red controls and green controls. If you select this widget at the hand and move it your arm will move. And then if you try to select the green widgets and move them or rotate them, nothing seems to happen. And I think that confuses a lot of people. One thing that I'm going to do very often is select all bones and then go to pose, clear, transform all to reset my rig to the default position. So what are these green controls and uh, why do they seem to do nothing? Uh, basically, the arm in Rigify offers both IK and FK control and it allows you to switch between the two. And by default, all limbs in Rigify are set to IK. That's why moving the red controls, which are the IK, will deform your mesh and moving the green ones currently won't. It is easy to switch uh, from IK to FK and back. Make sure you're in the item tab. If you just slide this IK FK a slider to, all the way to one and then try to uh, manipulate the, the green widgets, then your character will deform and then moving the red widgets will do nothing. Just in case you don't know what FK and IK is, FK stands for forward kinematics and IK stands for inverse kinematics. IK and FK are two different ways to manipulate a chain of bones. FK is basically the default behavior of uh, Blender bones. If you create a chain of bones in Blender, the bone at the top of the chain controls the bones further down the chain. The first bone controls all of the rest, the second bone controls all the bones after it, and so on and so forth. Let's go back to the rig and uh, switch to pose mode. So this is how the hand behaves uh, currently. Rotating the upper arm rotates the lower arm. Rotating the lower arm ro rotates the hand. And the hand itself is the end of the chain, so it doesn't affect anything after that. Let's uh, select any of these widgets and go back to IK mode by sliding the slider all the way to zero. And now if I move this uh, widget, it will adjust the position and rotation of my upper arm and lower arm. So this is the behavior of IK or inverse kinematics. It's basically the opposite of forwards kinematics. You manipulate the end of the chain and the rest of the bones up the chain adjust uh, their positions based on certain mathematical rules. And don't worry, as, as a user, as an animator, you don't really need to understand the mathematics behind inverse kinematics. Now you should understand what IK and FK is, and you should understand how to switch your arm between IK and FK mode. Um, another thing that may confuse you is this cogwheel widget. Since it's red, you may think that it has to do with IK, but really it doesn't have any functionality. It just holds all of the options for this limb. If I select any of the actual IK widgets, then in rig main properties, I'll get all the options that have to do with IK. If I select uh, an FK widget, then I get the options that have to do with FK. And if I select the cogwheel, then I get all of the options. 
whether they are for IK or FK. And personally, I rarely use this uh, cogwheel, so I can either hide it or move it to another layer. If you don't use it, then feel free to hide it from your interface. Now we are in IK mode, so let's explore uh, the rest of the IK options and controls. As you already understand, moving this uh, widget will move the whole arm around. If you rotate this widget, it will rotate the the hand. So by just selecting this widget and moving and rotating it, you can almost uh, perfectly position your arm. The only thing that you cannot do with this widget is, is to control the position of your elbow. Uh, to control the position of the elbow, you need to select this uh, uh, widget that looks like two arrows and you have to use rotation and that will adjust uh, the uh, position of the elbow. If you remember chapter 2, the introduction to uh, Blender Armatures, I showed you how to set up an IK leg and there we uh, did set up a pole target which controlled the knee of the leg. And you can have the same type of uh, pole target in Rigify. All you have to do is have an IK widget selected and then click this toggle pole button and that will show you this additional control. When you do this, you won't be able to manipulate these arrows anymore. Now the control over the elbow is in this widget. Rather than rotating this widget, you have to move it. And that will adjust the alignment of the elbow. And this type of pole target is uh, is considered the classical way. Many people prefer it. I prefer it as well. The last option that I want to show you uh, when it comes to the IK controls and IK options is this IK stretch option. Right now it's set to 1. And now if I grab the hand widget and move it, once I extend past the length of the arm, my arm will start stretching. And that's, that can be great for cartoony animations. But if you try to achieve realistic animations, you may not want that. So all you have to do is slide the slider all the way to 0. And then the widget will just keep moving but the arm will uh, not stretch. So that's about it for uh, IK controls. Let's slide the IK FK slider to 1 and that will move uh, the control to the FK control. Uh, notice how because the position of the IK and FK controls is slightly different, the arm gradually moves uh, to the FK controls. In a minute I'm going to explain how we can seamlessly uh, switch between IK and FK but let's first look at the actual FK controls. As I already said, controlling FK is fairly simple. It's basically the default way in which you uh, control bones in Blender. And because this is an arm, the most common action that you'll do is rotating the arm. Uh, now I'm going to hide all of the other widgets except for my arm so that uh, we can see what's happening better. So yeah, the movement of the FK controls is fairly simple. You just grab the part of the arm that you need and you rotate it. You can also scale it for cartoony effects, but generally you need to rotate it. Now let's unhide the torso to demonstrate the FK limb follow option. Currently it is uh, set to 1. I'm not sure if that's the default, but it doesn't matter. We are going to look at both behaviors. So I'm going to select this chest widget. And actually first I'm going to clear the transforms of the, the arm so that it's straight. And let's also hide the IK controls. Okay, let's move to the front view and make the arm completely straight like this. Now I'm going to grab the chest and rotate it. You will notice that the arm stays completely straight all the time. And that is uh, thanks to this FK limp follow option. If I head it off and then I rotated the chest, you'll see that the orientation of the arm changes. Initially it was straight, now it's this. And if I select the arm and slide it back to 1, you'll see that it will go to its or, uh, original orientation again. This option is very useful and it helps us avoid having to counter animate. Counter animating means that we have to animate something twice and uh, when we start posing the character, I think you'll see better how this is useful. So let's select all bones and clear the transform again. With that we covered how to use the arm in IK and FK. Now the last thing I want to show you here is uh, how to seamlessly uh, switch from IK to FK. Let's create a pose for the FK arm. And now if I click this IK to FK button, 
the IK controls will snap to the current position of the FK of the FK controls. And now if I slide the IK FK button uh, all the way to zero, then I'll be back in IK mode and it will be seamless. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to unhide all of the controls except for the uh, tweak controls, clear my pose. And so we just explored the arm that will make exploring the, the leg extremely uh, easy because the controls are almost the same. By default, the leg is also in IK mode. So if I grab the foot widget and move it, I'm going to move the whole leg. And if I rotate it, I'm going to rotate uh, the foot around the ankle. Again, if I slide the IK FK slider to one, uh, I'll, I'll be able to move the leg in FK mode. Again, the FK has a similar FK limb follow option. Uh, if I have it all the way to one and I rotate uh, the pelvis, for example, or the torso in this case, then the FK leg will preserve its orientation. Whereas uh, having this option off will kind of act as if the leg is rigidly connected to, to the body. So yeah, the basic options are exactly the same. Uh, you can again toggle the pole and have the classical uh, pole target if I switch to IK. Again, you can uh, snap uh, IK to FK and FK to IK. Uh, what I didn't uh, show you uh, in a, a second ago is that you can also snap the FK to the, the IK. It works exactly the same way. And then you can slide the slider and uh, be in FK mode. Now let's uh, make sure that we're in IK mode. There are a few differences uh, between the arm and the and the leg. The leg has this heel control. If I select rotation and make sure that I'm in local transformation, rotating this uh, on the X axis will roll the heel around the toes. And if I rotate it backwards, then, then I can raise the whole uh, leg around the heel. And if I rotate it in the Y axis, I get this uh, sideways roll of the foot. And there is one more widget and it allows you to rotate the foot around the toes. So this widget will rotate the foot around the ankle. And this widget ro uh, rotates it around the toes. So with that, uh, we covered the controls for the for legs and arms. And you may be wondering why do we have both IK and FK controls? That is because each mode has its pros and cons. IK is great when you need to pin the hand or the foot in space. For example, for the legs, you will often want to keep them to IK and that will allow you to plant the foots firm firmly on the ground. Right now, both of my feet are in IK mode. If I grab the torso and just move it, you see that the feet stay uh, firmly on the ground. And so as long as your character is in, uh, is staying on the ground, you, you will probably want the IK, the legs to be IK. Uh, now, if he suddenly starts flying in the, in the air, uh, you may want to switch to FK. The arms, on the other hand, you may want to keep them to FK. And that is uh, especially useful when you are animating, let's say, a walk. Rotating the upper arm gives you this natural swinging motion of, of the arm. But of course, there are also uh, situations where, where IK may be pre preferable. For example, when your character is uh, pushing against something, I have the torso selected and I'm going to... I have the torso selected and I'm going to turn off overlays to see what's happening better. And now if I move the torso, you see how the, uh, the hands stay in place as if they're pushing against a wall. 
Okay, let's look at the torso controls. Uh, we did manipulate this uh, big boxy widget already a little bit. This simply moves the whole torso with it. Uh, then we have the hips control, which gives you this swinging motion of the hips. This can be useful to simulate shifting the weight from one uh, leg to the other. And in the side view, it gives you this twerking motion. What this widget actually does is it rotates the lower, the lower half of the body and it gives it a curve. And the chest uh, widget does the opposite. It curves the upper part of the body. This is the neck control, and I think by default the head follow option is uh, set to zero. So uh, this is similar to the limp follow option in the hand. Uh, however, the value seems to be inverted. In the limbs, a follow value of one will preserve the orientation of the limb. But in the head, a follow value of zero preserves the orientation of the, of the head. I'm not sure why that is. It seems like a bug or a little bit of an inconsistency in Rigify. But anyway, uh, this circular widget at the top it controls the actual head rotation. And here, because I added ears, I have ears controls. Another important control is the clavicle or shoulder. Uh, if, if you rotate it, you can get this shrugging motion and also uh, as many people will point out, if you try to animate something, when the human arm raises above this uh, level, this will automatically start raising the shoulder. So if you want to achieve natural motion, uh, when you raise the arm of your character, always also consider the shoulder or the clavicle. These controls here are breast controls. Our character is rather male, so in this case we we'll won't use them much. You can even move them to another layer or hide them. Then we have a tail. If I select any of the circular widget along the tail, I can manipulate the part of the tail that comes after that widget. So this first widget will kind of rotate the whole uh, tail. The second one will uh, rotate this part and so on and so forth. Uh, one thing that you will notice is that there is a little bit of automation going on. If I rotate the, the tail up, the whole tail curves automatically. If I look from the top and again rotate the tail, you'll notice that no such automation, no such curving occurs. And that has, and that is set up inside the meta rig options. Uh, if I go back, if I unhide my meta rig, select it, go to pose mode and select the tail, uh, you'll see that this X option is activated. And this is what creates this automatic curving. And that is only when you rotate in the X axis. If you activate Z, then you will have automatic curving as well for the uh, in, in the Z axis. And if you activate Y, then also on the bones on axis, you will have an, an automation. Uh, I'll keep that to the default of X and uh, hide the meta rig. And uh, the last widget that you have for the tail is this one. And this widget only rotates the tail in the automated axis. So in this case, only in the X axis. You'll see that I cannot rotate it in the, in the Z axis or in the Y. And so if, if you set up uh, no automations, then this widget won't do anything. In my advanced course, uh, I have a part which is called the manual and there I explain all of these options in a lot of detail. I also explain all of the options for all of the rig types. So if you're interested in that, check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Now let's explore what the tweak controls do and then we can move to actually posing the character. So now just unhide all of the tweak layers and you'll see spherical widgets uh, appear all over uh, the rig. I'm going to change the viewport shading to solid so that we can see that better. The blue material kind of blends with, uh, with the widgets. So switch to solid mode and then we can see them. 
So these twig bones, whether they're on the hand or on the spine, uh, on the leg or uh, tail, they all kind of do the same. They, they allow you to do freeform deformations on your mesh. And generally, they appear between each bone in your uh, meta rig. In the limbs, that is a little bit different. Uh, they appear at the elbow and at the wrist, but also there is one additional twig bone between each of the main twig bones. So we have one main at the shoulder, one at the elbow, one at the wrist, and then between them there is one. And this can be actually set up in the metric. Instead of having just one additional twig bone between each of the main ones, we can have two or three or as many as we want. And again, I explained that in a lot of details in the uh, manual. And uh, these uh, twig bones, you can either move, uh, rotate or scale. And when you modify them very drastically, then you get something that is not realistic, but it is great for cartoony effects. So very often you'll use these in cartoony animations, but if you move them very subtly, then they may be used in realistic animation as well. For example, if I very gently scale this bone and move it up a bit, then this can simulate flexing of the muscle. With that, we are ready to start posing a character. So for this example, I'm going to go with a karate kick pose, but you can do whatever you like. I have already found and downloaded a reference image. And first I'm going to go to object mode. And then all I have to do is drag it from my browser window into my blender window and it will appear. I cannot give you access to this image because I don't have the rights for it. But um, if you just go to a search engine and uh, look for karate kick, you should be able to find suitable images. With this image selected, I want to go to the image properties and enable transparency. Now this guy is facing the other way. So if I press control M and then uh, hold the middle mouse button and uh, drag to the side, then I can mirror this image. And now I'm just going to scale it a little bit to to match my character. There is a whole debate whether uh, using reference images is good or not. Uh, personally, I think it's fine. I'm going to duplicate this image to the side. So I have it once over my character and, and also a little bit to the side. I'm also going to move this uh, image a little bit in the X axis. And now I can go to my rig and uh, switch, switch to pose mode. Again, I want to hide my tweak layers. And then I have to decide whether I want uh, my limbs to be IK or FK. In this case, I'm going to keep the arms to FK and I'm also going to enable the, the limb follow option. You have to do this for each uh, arm individually. And then I can hide the IK controls because I won't need them. For the legs, I want the supporting leg, this leg here, uh, to be IK because it will stay on the ground and the other one I could keep it to IK but I'm going to switch it to FK and again I want the uh, limb follow option on and now I want to hide the FK for the left leg and the IK for the, the right leg okay uh, the first thing I want to try to match uh, in the reference is the position of the torso. I can see that this guy is kind of bending backwards. And also, I'm going to switch to uh, orientation to local. Also, the whole torso is kind of bending to the side quite a bit. Okay, uh, now let's try to position the arms. They're in FK, so I can try, I can start rotating them. A nice trick that you can use when you pose your limbs in, in perspective mode is instead of uh, pressing R for rotation once, you can double tap R. And that will allow you to rotate your limb on many axes. It, it is a little bit hard to describe and at first it may feel a little bit unintuitive, but once you get used to it, it's very useful. But actually, I'll show you an even nicer trick. Uh, if you go in under Anpanel Tools and enable Auto IK, then I can grab the, uh, the lower arm here and I can start moving it. And that will move uh, the arm 
as if it was in IK mode, even though it is actually in FK mode. This is a very cool Blender feature. I'm going to go to side view and uh, try to match the reference. Uh, so this arm is looking nice now. Now I'm actually unable to see my image, so I'm going to go to object mode, select this image, and in the properties, I want to set the depth to front, and that will put the image in the front, and then I can play with the opacity until uh, it until I can see both my model and uh, the reference. And maybe if I switch to, yeah, maybe if I switch to uh, a material preview mode, then uh, I can see it even better. Now I'm going to rotate the leg uh, until it kind of matches the reference, and then I also need to rotate it on its own axis. So that's the Y axis. Okay, if I remove the overlays, I can see what I have uh, better because the reference image is getting in the way. Another way is to just hide the reference image for a second. Another thing that I see in the reference is that this leg is rotated quite a bit. So I'm going to first rotate the foot and then let's switch to, to the classic pole target and move it a little bit to the side as well. Okay, uh, inside view, let's try to match the position of this arm as well. I'm changing be between using standard rotation and the auto IK feature. I just use whichever you makes more sense in the in the current situation. So this overlapping um, reference is getting uh, difficult to work with. At some point you have to stop relying on your overlapping references and just look at a reference that you have on the side or just go by, by your feeling. You can also use multiple references, that's also very useful because they can show you different aspects of the pose that you want to recreate. So I'm just going to delete this reference image and this one I'm also going to delete because I have two monitors and I, I'm going to have the reference image on the second monitor. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can, there are many things uh, that you can do. You can just keep the reference here. Uh, you can switch this window to the image ed editor and load the image. Okay, another thing that I can see in my reference is the, that the upper body is not straight, but it curves a little bit. So I'm going to grab the chest control and rotate it. And here uh, you can actually see the advantage of having the limp follow option on. If it was off, I have to recreate this pose again, but it, if it was off and then I try to reposition my chest, then this arm uh, will a move and then I'll have to adjust the position again. If I try to reposition the uh, chest again, then I have to go back to the arm and position it again. I'm going to undo. Here I have the uh, limp follow option off. Uh, I can rotate the chest, but the arm will keep its uh, general alignment and that will allow me to work faster. And that is even more useful when you're actually animating this character. Because when you're animating, you would have to set one keyframe for the chest and then one for the upper arm and one for the lower arm and so on. But if you have this uh, follow option on, then uh, you may be able to avoid setting those additional keyframes. Anyway, let's keep adjusting the, the pose. I'm going to select the hips and uh, turn off overlays. And then I'm going to double tap R and try to see if rotating the hips would improve the pose uh, in some way. In this case, I don't, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to uh, leave that for a second. Let's focus on the head. The head should be a little bit up and the character should also be looking at in the direction in which he's kicking. I can uh, also try to move the, the neck a little bit. Here, I think rotating the shoulder up a little bit is uh, nice. And I'll move the arm a little bit up. This arm is supposed to guard your face. If that was uh, kickboxing rather than, than karate, then maybe the, this arm should be here as well to guard the face. So yeah, I'm going to go with that. Uh, let's experiment and have fun with this. I'm going to try uh, to 
rotate the foot a little bit to match what I see in the reference. Let's turn off, off overlays. By the way, if you see me quickly toggle uh, the overlays on and off that you can toggle from here, that is because I have activated a special pie menu. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about that. Uh, just know that when, it, when I quickly toggle these um, overlays, it, it it's the same as clicking over here. And so I wasn't very happy with this uh, foot being straight like this. I think rotating it a little bit looks better. I'm not also not quite sure about the hips area. We can spend a lot of time trying to fine tune everything. So that's that's not too bad. Um, I also want to move the, uh, the tail in a position that I like. And again, I'm going to activate the follow option and that will give me a very nice uh, starting position for the position for the pose of the tail. And then I'm just going to rotate it a little bit and that looks nice. So yeah, then you can keep experimenting with this. If you're uh, a kid from the 90s like I was, um, you can try to do a Van Damme pose like this, or maybe some sort of a flying kick. I'm going to switch this uh, leg as well to FK and unhide the FK controls. Here again, the head follow uh, and limb follow options uh, help me preserve the, the poses for the arms that I already established so that I don't have to do much additional work. And I can end up with uh, something like this. So I definitely encourage you to try this for yourself. Find references of poses that you want to achieve. They don't have to be kicks or punches. They can be uh, ballet poses. Ballet poses are definitely very nice and interesting to imitate or whatever you like. Actually, it would be super cool if you post the poses that you achieved in, in the comments. Uh, just uh, upload them to Imajur or Imagur, whatever it's called. I'm going to Google it now, actually. Oh, supposedly it's, it's pronounced Imajur. Okay, so yeah. I hope to see your creations. I did skip some of the uh, additional options like this IK parent, uh, pole, ta pole parent. There are a few others that I did skip. Uh, there are also other rig types which I didn't handle in this video. But I think this should give you a very solid ground. Now you should know where to look for the additional options and then you can play with them and find out what they do. And of course you can also check out my uh, manual where I have a short video for each and every one of these options. Also for the options of the meta rig, if you go to the meta rig, there are some options that you can change before you generate your rig that will affect the final rig. Uh, and yeah, I cover all of that in the manual. Uh, okay, more videos are coming soon. A lot of you want to know more about weight painting, which I'm going to cover very soon. I have a, a video about the, the Rigify facial rig. I'm going to have a video about that as well. So yeah, uh, subscribe, stay subscribed and uh, see you soon.